This is Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. I don't know whether the spicy chips relate to the girl or the food, but, you know... One lucky person will be getting the chance to find romance as they enjoy three very special meals, cooked for them by three very special blind dates. Devilish and angelic in one meal. Um, it could be interesting. Today's dinner date is 33-year-old video producer Matthew from Hampshire. I've got my own video production company. We film anything from corporate presentations to jet skiers on lakes and being in Barcelona. So I get to go to some quite exciting places and meet lots of different people. So I, I really enjoy my job. But jet-setting off to the far-flung corners of the world and such a busy lifestyle does have its downside. I've been single pretty much most of my life. I've had kind of relationships that have lasted around six months or so, but nothing that's gone any further. My friends always tell me off for being too fussy, but uh, I don't have any intention to not be picky, so it's just a case of finding kind of the right person, I think. Sir Matthew's choosy when it comes to the ladies, but food is a different story. You know, I've been around the world, so I've tried lots of different delicacies and, and food, so I'm not sure there's much that could be served up that I wouldn't want to try, at least. When it comes to dinner, Matthew's willing to give anything a go. But what's he looking for in a date? I'm generally really attracted to um, people that are quite warm and smiley. I'm not the tallest person in the world, so no one that's too tall. I'm pretty much ready, I think, to settle down and find the one. Um, you know, I do so many different things that it'd be quite nice to have someone to share it all with. Oh, no, it's really sloppy. Matthew's going to be given five menus, each put together by a potential blind date. The five ladies behind the menus have all come up with a three-course meal, but Matthew will only be having dinner with three of them. He'll choose his dates based on the menus he most likes the look of. So who are the ladies behind the menus? We'll start at menu number one and let's see what we have in store. My ideal date would be in Paris, an Eiffel Tower, and uh, with lots of candles, roses, some seafood, and uh, probably somebody singing French. Menu one comes from 27-year-old fashion student Sonia, and it's a bit of a globetrotter. Italian starter, South African main, and French afters. What will frequent flyer Matthew make of it? South African chicken. No idea what that entails. Never had anything South African. For dessert, we have Melina Millifuli. Not entirely sure how you say that. Yeah, no, it definitely sounds intriguing. Right, let's have a look at what number two has in store, see how it can compare. Good afternoon, Media Tal Group. I never ever think before I speak, I just say what I'm thinking, and it can offend a lot of people. <laughs> the second menu comes from 27-year-old data executive Disha. She's hoping her meaty starter and main and indulgent pud will press all the right buttons with Matthew. I do like pork belly, so that sounds pretty good. Petto dauphinoise, reasonably simple, but and seasonal vegetables, so not a great deal of effort. So let's have a look at menu number three. My friends would describe me as adventurous, uh, probably a bit crazy, and I really like to talk a lot. Menu three comes from 26-year-old maths teacher Louise. Will her Australian-inspired main and boozy biscuit pud get top marks from Matthew? Illawarra kangaroo steak with creamy mash and a down-under red wine jus. Awesome. Bailey's ice cream. That's a clear winner. I can kind of imagine some blonde surf chick, some kind of tanned, gorgeous blonde or something. On to menu four. Trying to look good makes me feel good, and you never know who you're going to meet on the train if it breaks down, so it's always worth putting that bit of extra effort in. Menu four comes from executive secretary and fitness fanatic Rebecca. Will her tongue-tingling mane and naughty-sounding dessert get Matthew's pulse racing? OK. I don't know whether the spicy chips relate to the girl or the food, but, you know, not a massive dessert person, but yeah, that sounds pretty good. And I really like what she's done with the sinful and heavenly thing. So she's definitely quite cheeky. Let's see how number five compares to all the others. I dislike it when they don't buy the first drink on a first date. 
The fifth and final menu comes from 28-year-old marketing manager and keen cyclist Laura. Will Matthew want to go for a spin with her Moroccan mane and classic American dessert? The only soup, so that that's gives me a bit of choice. Not the biggest fan of lamb, can be a little bit fatty. Tangine, not entirely sure what's in a tangine. I'm sure I've had it before. I think it's kind of Mediterranean, maybe tomato -y or something. Near enough, it's North African. Matthew's seen all five menus on offer, but which three have taken his fancy? Um, really tough choice, because actually I really like all five menus. Um, but date-wise, I'm most intrigued by these, so I'm going to choose menu number one, menu number three, and menu number four. I'm sorry to the other two, but I think these just went through. So Matthew's gone for menu one from Sonia, menu three from Louise, and menu four from Rebecca. Over the next three nights, Matthew will meet each of the ladies behind the menus he's chosen. They'll all be making him a slap-up three-course meal, but who will he want to see for seconds at the end of the week? Matthew's first date is with 28-year-old Czech-born fashion student, Sonia. Fashion is my passion. I live for fashion. All my money is hanging in my wardrobe because I spend it on dresses. I love expensive clothes. I love it. So there's plenty of passion in Sonia's closet, but when it comes to her love life, it's a different story. I'm finding it difficult to find somebody who would be a great match for me somebody who would be like me, maybe even total opposite, I don't know. I'm just not meeting them. So what's Sonia's number one requirement in a man? I'm just looking for somebody who will love me, that's all. Oh, that's not too much to ask. Might Matthew be the match she's looking for? When he saw her menu, Matthew was intrigued by Sonia's South African mane and the sort of girl that might be behind it. He wasn't sure what was for afters either. It's an international menu of mystery. Sonia kicks off with her mi feuille, a French dessert that translates literally as a thousand leaves because of the layers of puff pastry it's made with. Sonia's is courtesy of a packet. I chose to make this dessert because I absolutely love cream and I absolutely love uh, raspberries and puff pastry. That's my winning combination. It's essential that the pastry layers are very thin because they'll, well, puff up. Sonia glazes her pastry discs with egg and bakes for six minutes. Then it's on to the filling. Extra thick double cream. Just need a little bit of sugar. I will put brown sugar because I prefer brown sugar. I know it's supposed to be icing sugar. I just put it a bit mm, of Not sure the French would approve. Whisking's proving a little tricky. It's more like poking. All that wrist action looks exhausting. Time for a taste test. At least it's sweet. Now, how's that pastry coming along? I think my dessert is going to be massive because it's supposed to go on top of each other. I think it's rather big. But I think bigger, the better. Who says size doesn't matter? Next, Sonia moves on to the main, sun-kissed South African chicken. Matthew's a man with an adventurous palate, but he's never tried South African cuisine, so was keen to give it a go. Time now for Sonia's sun-kissed sauce for the chicken. She mixes mustard powder with mango chutney, two tablespoons of Worcester sauce, a squeeze of lemon and lime, some mayonnaise and finally garlic and pours the lot over the chicken. It doesn't look appetising now, but it's going to be lovely once it's done. The, the, the most disgusting looking food is the best food in the world. If you say so, love. Then it's onto the salad to accompany the main. Wait, chicken check. Oh, it's looking amazing. It's getting all nice and glazed. It's looking good, it's all golden. With dinner in hand, Sonia's thoughts turn to the person she'll be sharing it with. Best scenario for tonight's date is basically a hunky, gorgeous looking guy coming through my door and um, sleeping me off my feet, <laughs> loving my food, thinking I'm amazing. That would be the perfect date for me, it would make my day. Yeah. Back to the me fay, usually made with lots of layers of puff pastry and filled with cream or custard. But Sonia's layers are a little puffier than expected, so she's cutting them in half. Two for the price of one, then. On her menu, dessert was Malina Mifo. Turns out Malina means raspberry in Czech. All that remains is the goat's cheese and ciabatta starter. Sonia will be serving her posh cheese on toast with cherry tomatoes. 
Finished. Finito. I'm out. Good job, because Matthew's on his way. I've really no idea what to expect from uh, the girl behind the menu, um, apart from the fact that I think she might be South African because uh, of the food, and um, she either has goats, or she likes goats, or she cares for locally sourced goats. So Matthew's expecting a goat-loving South African. And Sonia? I'm worried about the guy. What is he going to look like? What is he going to be like? Are we going to get on or not really? Is it going to be a disaster? Is it going to be fabulous? I really am worried now. Nervous. I need a drink. I need a glass of wine. She'll find out if there's reason to be nervous soon enough. Will romance be on the menu for Matthew and Sonia? This is Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. 33-year-old video producer Matthew from Hampshire is going for three romantic dinners, each cooked by a blind date. At the end of the week, he'll take one of them out for a meal they haven't had to cook. But right now, he's just arrived for his first date with Czech-born fashion student Sonia. Hi, uh, hi, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Matthew. Sonia. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Good How are you meet. doing? Hi, Sonia. I'm very good. Thank you very much. It's freezing cold. Yes. And he's not turned up empty-handed. Now, I've got some wine. Oh, really? Now, I, I have taken a little bit of a punt here. Oh, really? I guess from the menu that you're South African. Um, not at all, but I'll ask No, I, I know. I figured that out now. <laughs> but, well, it goes with the food. So we've got some South African wine. OK, and that's lovely. Thank you. Even more inappropriate, but kind of appropriate for the menu. Biltong. <laughs> Biltong. <laughs> that's so, so sweet. So I thought Biltong kind of, I you know. Like <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's, that's all right. Lovely. They might not have been from the right continent, but Matthew's gifts were well received. Time to get comfy. No, I do like this. This is quite good. It's like um, Moroccan or something. It is very boho chic. It is. Like the kind of the, the cold kind of textured kind of um, pillow thing. Yeah, no, I like it. It's good. Matthew likes the unconventional dining arrangements, but what about his date? Yeah, I did think she was going to be South African. <laughs> um, so, but she seems to like the biltong and the wine. So, uh, so at least I didn't commit too much of a social faux pas. Oh, I think you'll be forgiven. Sonia? I think he is um, handsome. He's very attractive, he's very polite, he's very sweet, and I quite like him so far. Mmm, good start. Now, where's that goat's cheese ciabatta starter? Awesome, lovely. Excellent, tasty. On the menu it said um, local sourced goat's cheese. Did it? I was, I was kind of, I was expecting you to kind of be going out like milking your own goats or something <laughs> to kind of make the cheese. No, trust me, I didn't. It's a, okay. it's a lovely um, free-range um, goat cheese, but um, it's not local, but it's from a farm. Oh, okay. No, no, that's fine. As long as it's from a farm, I'm okay. You know, I didn't want it from, from like a mountain. You know, farms yeah. much better. <laughs> no, well, no, apparently, you know, farm goats are better goats. So. What's he got against mountain goats? Mm, that's really nice, actually. Is it nice? Mm. I'm glad. I'm glad. Mm. And it's not burnt as well, which is always a bonus. I can kind of imagine if it was me, I think I'd be kind of pots and pans mm. and mm. there'd be blood and sweat everywhere <laughs> and it would all be going wrong everywhere. Nice. Still hungry, Sonia. Matthew's having no trouble polishing it off. Yeah, that's really, really nice. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Starter over. It's time for some sun-kissed South African chicken in South Surrey. Sonia's serving it with rice and a side salad. What will Matthew make of his first taste of South African cuisine made by a Czech-born cook? Oh, that's really good. Mmm, it smells hope good it as well. It tastes good. Well, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to move my feet, cos I'm, I'm not used to kind of sitting like this, so... Sorry, it, I'm going to eat on the sofa. It's not the most gentlemanly kind of position, but I'm going to have to straddle, I'm afraid. Oh, very athletic. Mmm. That is very nice. So the chicken seems to be going down a treat. But Matthew has a question he wants answering. So who did you expect to walk through the door when I came through? Did you have some kind of, like, expectation or...? I had somebody with the dark hair, so that was probably about it, yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> I don't like blonde hair you see on the guys, so oh, okay. that, that, that's just fine. Oh, that's not too bad, then. At least I've got the kind of the dark <laughs> hair. This isn't my natural colour. I oh, know. No. You're blonde. Yeah, I'm naturally oh. blonde, but no. You big kidder. I think I'm blushing. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> you are as well. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am blushing now. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs>
Oh, things are starting to heat up. Must have been that sun-kissed chicken. Our bashful cook heads off to get afters and something's caught Matthew's eye. So have you done many of these, Sonia? Or is this kind of like a, a one-off thing? Uh, I have done quite a few of those. That's so cool. There's a blonde in here quite a lot, so I'm guessing that's you. Very possibly. OK. And I can see you in your bikini, which is, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a first for a first date, but, you know, looking good. <laughs> And the fishnets, are they yours? Steady. Yes. Yeah, OK, OK. You know, I don't need too much, but yeah, <laughs> no, it's really good. She's shown him her etchings. Now Sonia makes a quick exit for dessert. The Molina Mife. Ah. Matthew didn't know what it was when he saw the menu. What will he make of the mystery pud? I'm always tempted to just pick it up and just gulp it down. I guess you could, possibly. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do either. It's just no, 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 civilised no. with the four o'clock. Absolutely. And we're very civilised people. Yeah. It's nice. Mm. All three courses have gone down a treat, but it's time to go. What did Matthew make of his first dinner date? Take care. You too. Good Bye -bye. night. Physically, yeah, very much my type. And I like the fact that she was creative and quite imaginative. I think there was a bit of chemistry there, but I think some of that was because of the fact that it was the first time we've met and we were having dinner. So um, I'll have to kind of give that some thought. Uh, I felt kind of a chemistry. I think I did. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think um, we could go out more and get to know each other. Definitely. Matthew will be the one who decides which of his three dinner dates to take out at the end of the week. But which of them will want to go out with him? All three dates will be scoring him out of a possible three stars. I would give him two and a half stars out of three. And the reason for two and a half stars is that, that I think I could get to know Matthew a little bit more. Maybe he would deserve three stars. That's two and a half stars for Matthew from fashion student Sonia. A designer date and no mistake. Next day, and it's date number two. Cooking for Matthew tonight is 26-year-old maths teacher Louise. I'm really passionate about travelling. I love to go away whenever I can. I've got this long list of places I'd want to go to and wish I could go. But after being single for two years, there's something missing from Louise's wish list. Some of the places I'd like to go and travel to and things like that, I think it'd be nice to share with someone. And obviously, then you'd be able to come back and you'd be talking about where you've been and all the stuff that you've done together. Well, globetrotting Matthew certainly ticks that travel bug box. When he saw Louise's menu, he thought her kangaroo mane sounded awesome and hoped there might be a surfing blonde Aussie behind it. And the alcoholic ice cream was the clincher. I made a list of everything I need to do so I don't forget or, like, get disorganised and confused, because it's quite easy to do. First on the list, the seasonal greens. With the starter, well, started, Louise tackles the dessert Matthew was so excited about. Next on the list, the homemade cookie cups she'll be serving her ice cream in. She begins by weighing margarine on the lid of the margarine tub. Precision stuff. I'm trying to make cookie dough, so I've just taken a cookie recipe and um, just use that, basically, and then I'm going to try and mould it. I'm not, no idea how I'm doing this moulding malarkey. I might just serve a cookie, to be honest, because... Next, some light brown sugar that Louise sieves. It's not coming out. It's an implement more commonly used for flour. Good luck with that. Oh, let's just pour it in. Can't be bothered. Yeah, chucking it in's your best bet. Oh. <laughs> Next, creaming the margarine and sugar. Usually done with a wooden spoon. Louise is giving it a go with a smoothie blender. How's that working out? This is rubbish. <laughs> this is just so <laughs> My arm hurts already. She adds two eggs, vanilla essence, baking powder and plain flour. Here's where that sieve might come in handy. Or not. It's taken ages. Sure, it'll be the same. If I whisk it all together, it'll be fine. Not quite a whisk, though, is it? <laughs> Louise stirs in chocolate chunks with a wooden spoon. Could have done with that earlier. She'll bake her cookie dough later. So, it's back to the starter. How's the asparagus? Well, maybe they're a bit too soft. A little on the limp side, maybe. Louise moves on to the red wine jus for her kangaroo steaks. But it's not just any old red wine jus. I looked at a few recipes and they all had different things. So I picked out stuff from each of them and just thought I'd add them all together. 
Nothing like creativity in the kitchen. Louise softens some onions, adds chopped plum, a squirt of tomato puree, some ginger, a clove of garlic, soy sauce and a spoonful of mango chutney. Anything else? Oh yes, mustard, brown sugar, a stock cube and dried rosemary. Still not 100% sure about this sauce. You're not the only one. Some balsamic vinegar, caramelised onions, a squeeze of lemon, a squeeze of lime and fresh rosemary. I couldn't find any fresh rosemary. Not fresh rosemary. So I thought, I thought I'd go for fresh thyme. Ah oh, well, a herb's a herb. Finally, the important ingredient, red wine. And Louise leaves it all to reduce at a gentle simmer. I do enjoy cooking, but I don't do it as often as I'd like. If it's just for me, I just do like a microwave meal or like maybe sausage and mash or something, but nothing as fancy as this. So much more than a red wine jus. 17 other ingredients more to be precise. A taste sensation. Back to the starter and wrapping that asparagus in parma ham. Oh no, the plastic's still on. Put them like that on the plate or something, I guess. That'll be fine. The time's running out. I've still got this simmering away. And then I should be sort of on time before it comes. I need to put the cookie dough on the trays. <laughs> Here's one she used earlier. A few weeks earlier. Cookie dough sorted. There's just time for Louise to get dolled up. Just top up the last of the makeup and then hopefully I'm ready. Better hurry up. Matthew's just around the corner. I'm looking forward to this date. Um, this is definitely the menu that kind of interested me the most. It's very intriguing with the kangaroo and uh, the Australia theme. So, um, yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, oh my God, already? Hi, Al. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice I'm Matthew. Louise. Nice to meet you. you. I'm very good, thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want me to take your coat or something? Uh, yeah, please. Well, I've, now I've got this. This okay. is this Australian wine. Oh, brilliant. That'll go brilliant with a kangaroo. Well, this, well that's yeah. the thing. But I did kind of think that you might be Australian. No, so. I'm not Australian. <laughs> mm, not having much luck with his nationality-based gifts. But what do they make of each other so far? It seems really nice, actually. Very bubbly. Um, lots of character, so that's really good. And she's offered me a drink already, so that's a definite thumbs up. I'm quite fussy, and he's not the sort of person I'd typically go for, but... It seems pleasant enough, so we'll have to see, I guess. Looks can't get you everywhere. Did she mean that in a good way? Will Louise's Australian-themed dinner be a delight from down under or a bush took a blunder? This is Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. 33-year-old video producer Matthew from Hampshire is going on three romantic dinners, each cooked by a blind date. He's already been on his first date with Czech-born fashion student Sonia. But right now, he's just arrived at the home of date number two, 26-year-old maths teacher Louise. Louise wastes no time in dishing up her starter, asparagus wrapped in parma ham. Wow, excellent. That looks really tasty, actually. Thanks. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, that is perfection. Yeah, nice and soft and nice ham. Yeah. So the starter's going down well and the conversation's gone down under. So you lived out there? Um, I lived there for a year. I loved it. It was, like, amazing. If I could go back tomorrow, I would, to be honest. Well, well I went to Australia last year. Oh, really? Everyone smiles. Everyone's happy. It's great, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no, totally. Who do you normally travel with? Do you like with friends and all? Um, most of the time I go on my own. Mm. Could be Louise has an opening for a travel companion. But there's the Australian-inspired main course to be dealt with. Louise checks on her red wine jus. Hmm, more jam than jus. It's meant to be liquid. Port, maybe? Yeah, why not? The kangaroo steaks go in the oven, along with some tomatoes in balsamic vinegar. Next, the mash to go with the kangaroo. And Louise has a secret ingredient for that creamy consistency. A cheese triangle. Nice touch. She'll be piping her mash onto the plates. Presentation's everything, after all. I've never used one of these bags before, so I don't really know what I'm doing with it. I'm giving it a whirl. <laughs> Something's coming out! Oh, yeah! No, no! No, I'm giving up. It's just going to be done up top. It's too hard to do. Right. Oh, that looks all right. I'll just do it without the thing. Say what you like, but she's not scared of improvising. Kangaroo out of the oven, and now the star turn, that red wine jus. Still looks a bit funny, so what I'll do is I'll put the sieve and I'll put it through, but I'll put the sieve on it to kind of 
drain it a bit, hopefully. Mm. That's a colander, a sieve for sugar, a smoothie maker for creaming, and a colander for sieving. Nothing like the right tool for the job. The final flourish, roast tomatoes, and dinner is served. Oh, no, just one more thing. The cookie dough needs cooking, and dinner is served. Will Louisa's kangaroo have Matthew jumping for joy? Awesome. That's OK. The sauce looks good as well. Hmm. So. No, it's good actually. I don't know. I think it's a bit chewy, maybe. I think I should have cooked it for well, a I, bit I, less time. No, but I think I think kangaroo generally is. Is he just being polite? I can't even cut this. Are <laughs> you struggling? <laughs> so at least it's entertaining. Yeah. How was dinner? Well, it was okay, but I've got really good muscles in my it's right arm. That was less polite. So what kind of things were you looking for for the guy that turned up today, then? I was just looking for someone that was, like, chatty and smiley and happy. What about you? Actually, it's quite funny, because it's pretty much almost exactly the same. Mm. So they both like travelling and they both like someone smiley. Could be good. The kangaroo, not so much. I might leave just that bit. <laughs> I've left that like, half of mine, so I can't really... Because I, I didn't bring my pickaxe. <laughs> so much for good manners. But no, the rest was really nice. It was very tasty. Kangaroo dispatched. It's time for the dessert Matthew was so looking forward to. Those cookie cups. They look a bit more like muffins than cookies. I think what I'll do is I'll cut the middle out or something and make a cup out of them. Improvising again, eh? She carves out a hole and then, to get that all-important cookie crunch, Louise has a plan. Grilling. Oh, it's burning a bit. Yeah, that's completely burnt. Maybe a tad too crunchy now. Good thing she's got a backup. Louise brings out reinforcements, which she serves with ice cream on a plate. No, in a bowl. And they're ready to go. Lovely. Thank you very much. So I'm sorry. No, that's OK. Um, I have to apologise. It's not actually a cookie. It's more of a cake, but there's loads of ice that's cream. That's OK. That will make no, up for it, really. No, we can deal with, with cake rather than a cup. And that's pretty good. It's very crunchy. Just eat the ice cream. Don't no, 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 I'm, no. I'm going to persevere. Come on, look, you've made the effort. It's just a and chew. Mine's chewy in the middle. It's like the crunchy outside and then like a chewy in the middle. It's fine. Mm. It's the harder outer with a softer inside. Yeah, there you go. Much like me. There. No, really? not like me. <laughs> Aw, Sir Matthew's soft on the inside, but with the date over, is he soft on Louise? You too. Take care. Physically very, very attractive. Um, lots of fun, lots to say, and very smiley. Um, and we, we, ha we had quite a lot of banter. Now, whether that's kind of friendly banter or whether that's kind of flirty banter, you know, I think it takes more than kind of a couple of hours to tell. Matthew seems like a really nice guy. Uh, we had a good laugh. He's not the sort of guy that I typically go for. I'd probably pick someone a bit more like Olly Murs. So Matthew's no Olly Murs, but has he got the X factor for Louise? How will she rate her date? Out of three stars, I'd give him two because he ate all my food, but I don't think there was much of a spark there. That's a respectable two stars for Matthew from maths teacher Louise. Not quite top of the class, but a good B+. The next day and it's time for Matthew's third and final dinner date with 29-year-old Executive Secretary Rebecca from Surrey. I suppose you could call me the hot secretary. I do like the pencil skirts and the high-heeled shoes and the stockings and all that. I go to the gym three, four times a week. Trying to look good makes me feel good. But our hot secretary Rebecca's been single for two years and she's ready to give her love life a workout. I haven't actually been out on a date for the last nearly four or five months. I've tried online dating, nothing's worked so far and I haven't met Mr Right, so hopefully, possibly tonight, that might all change. Let's hope so. When he saw Rebecca's menu, Matthew was intrigued about the woman behind a dessert that was naughty and nice. And he wondered whether the spicy chick main was also a description of her. And it's the spicy chick that's first on Rebecca's to-do list. She begins with the marinade. I have cooked in the kitchen before. I've done cereal, I've done toast. I've even attempted to do mashed potato in the microwave before, so, yeah, I've used my kitchen. Not sure that quite counts as cooking. Never mind, here goes. Rebecca chops green and red chilies for her chicken, adds a squeeze of lime and a whole lot of jerk sauce. This now needs to be left to marinate in the spices so we can make sure it's got that extra fire. One course down and Rebecca's already feeling the pressure. 
It's not as easy as it looks, this cooking lark. There's quite a few things that could go wrong tonight. Timings, burning, cooking, generally the whole thing, actually, so we'll wait and see. When you put it like that, best get on with it. Rebecca tackles the salad to go with her main. Next, the starter. This is quite a simple recipe, yeah. It's not hard to do, but when it's done well, I think it's got really good results. I mean, who doesn't like a nice bit of camembert? Come on. Rebecca pierces the top of the cheese and sticks garlic in the slits. So I'm actually not quite sure what I'm doing right now. You're doing a grand job, girl. Rebecca drizzles her camembert with olive oil and wraps it up in baking parchment to cook it on papillot, where food steams in its own juices. Basically, posh bake in a bag. This is also how I wrap Christmas presents. Tasty little stocking filler, that. Onto the ciabatta to go with the garlicky cheese. This is fresh bread as far as I'm concerned because it needs heating up, so it's going to be freshly heated when he arrives. Not quite the same as homemade. Olive oil and balsamic vinegar for dipping and the starter's ready to go. Just dessert left. And Rebecca's called in the cavalry. Her mum. I have got simple ginger cake on my menu tonight, but the only simple thing I could come up with was getting someone else to make it for me. Don't it look good? <laughs> Yum. Well done, mum. Though technically that's cheating. I wonder what your mother would make of that icing. Back to the main and Rebecca's doing this all on her own. She pan fries her spicy chicken for ten minutes, then adds the rest of the jerk sauce. All done. What was she worried about? Finish with all the prep for the food, everything's ready, now it's time to make the table look beautiful and then myself. Just in time, Matthew's on his way. Really don't know what to expect for tonight's date. Um, a few mixed messages from the uh, from the food. So we've got a bit of garlic at the start, which could be a bit whiffy. Uh, the main course was a spicy chick, so I don't know whether that's relating to her. Uh, the dessert was definitely the, the thing that interested me most, though. Uh, devilish and angelic in one meal. Um, it could be interesting. Better devilish or angelic than whiffy, I suppose. And Rebecca's wondering what sort of man she'll find on her doorstep. And whether he'll measure up. I'm hoping that whoever's behind that door tonight has got a good sense of humour and is not short at all. Showtime. Hi there. Hi. Hello, I'm Matthew. I'm Rebecca. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Come in. You look great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have bought you some wine. It was recommended to me. It's Prosecco, so we'll kind of give it a go. Prosecco, surely. I have got a couple of presents. I've taken the hint from your dessert, so <laughs> we've got horns All right. for the devilish okay. bit. Excellent. And then we've got a halo for the angelic bit. All right. I think what we should do is wait for us to have the meal and for everything to come out, and then you to offer me which one you think I should have. We'll go with it. I can go with that. That's fine. Yeah. So the presents were well received, but how about those first impressions? She seems really nice. Um, she's very attractive. I love the dress. Um, I've noticed the uh, the open backs. So that's quite nice, quite sexy. Um, she seems quite scatty and uh, quite mad. So I think we're, I think we're going to have quite a, f a fun evening. Shorter than I was hoping for. Bloody hell! If I'd gone for the other heels, we'd have been in all sorts of trouble tonight. Time for the starter. Rebecca places the warm bread rolls on a lazy Susan serving tray, unveils the baked camembert, and voila. That is... We're doing a very Spanishy that is kind of... That is I love it. Fun. It spins, so don't be frightened to spin <laughs> it round. That's camembert heated with roasted garlic. So have you, have you made the cheese, then? Is this something that you've made? Yeah. Often? There's a cow out back. Okay. I um, churned it earlier. And the bread I made by... Yeah, I'll just... Have, have, you, not, have you not baked the bread? <laughs> it's heated, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you little tinker. I think we know which present she ought to be wearing. You've actually yeah. got to put them on. Yeah, abso oh. yeah. yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. That is very good. I know. That's very becoming. As the starter goes down, the confessions come out. I can't cook, <laughs> and if it can't be microwaved, it doesn't go in the basket. OK. So not only are you a blind date, but you are a guinea pig as well. <laughs> OK. Well, you see, I, I'm not entirely sure what's coming up for main course. <laughs> so I'm quite... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that makes two of us. Sure, it'll be a nice surprise.
Rebecca gets her spicy chick out and some herby potatoes. Oh, wow. All right, I'm just going to bring you some salad that out of the microwave. That looks really good. Awesome. I know. It smells really good too as well, actually. And for the salad, a cooling dressing. Shop bought. Jalapenos make me hiccup, but apart <laughs> from that, there's no jalapenos. And you're going to need a Heinic manoeuvre after that, thing, <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, that is quite spicy. <laughs> no, that's good. How long before you have to take something out of the glass? That is big. I'm just, I'm just making sure I'm not about to hiccup. As Matthew struggles with his devilishly hot chick, Rebecca struggles to find something in common. Do you not like shopping at all? Do you like shoes? Um, I don't mind shopping, but I, I think the problem is, is that if there's something specific that I like, I will go and find it and I'll go and buy it and that's kind of done. And quite often that'll be on the internet because it's much quicker oh, and easier. I hate internet shopping. Oh, I see. I like to feel the bags in my hand. I like that aura of glow I get when I'm walking down with my arms <laughs> cradling new purchases. So no retail therapy for these two then. Time for the sinful ginger cake and another confession. I didn't actually make the cake. My mum did. It's, oh, well, I... it's homemade, but just not in this home. <laughs> what about the icing? Oh, but I did do the icing myself. Is that yours? That is my sinful spelling. OK. I'm just going to leave this on the table and finish okay. with the custard, and then I'll be out shortly. OK, so this is the sinful bit. This is the sinful bit, and the and custard is the halo part. It's the heavenly bit. It's very heavenly, yes. Right. As Rebecca steps back into the kitchen, the halo goes on, and so does the heavenly custard. Didn't know heaven came in a pot. Oh, and look at the lumps. <gasps> oh, my God. And sinful cake is served with heavenly custard. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have paper For... on the dessert and the custard is literally doing an egg For... flip out of the container. Fortunately, I really fancied scrambled eggs with my pudding, so it's Yeah, but it's that's perfect. an angel custard. It's special. Special as in lumpy? No, that's very tasty. I know. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Desserts ended the evening on a high thanks to Rebecca's mum. So what did Matthew make of his third and final dinner date? We had a really a lot of fun. She didn't stop talking throughout the whole meal. Um, but that was good, you know, it's good to, to have some energy and uh, someone to have some good banter with. And overall, yeah, it was really good fun. If I'm honest, he probably wouldn't be the type of person I'd approach in a bar. But then saying that, I've had a really enjoyable evening. It was really easy to talk to. How will Rebecca rate her date? Because of how easy the conversation was, I'm going to give him a two out of three star rating. So that's two out of three stars for Matthew from Rebecca. Neither sinful nor heavenly, but somewhere in the middle. The dinners have been eaten, the dates are done and dusted. Now Matthew must decide which lady from our tempting trio he wants to see again. Who will he be taking out for a romantic meal? And who will be eating in alone? This is Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. Video producer Matthew has finished three days of back-to-back -back blind dates. Now it's time for him to decide who he wants to see for seconds over a romantic meal for two at a top restaurant. First up was Czech-born fashion student Sonia, and it was a very creative evening. I was quite surprised when I got there, there wasn't actually a dinner table to sit at. Um, instead, we kind of had a collection of boxes with a dinner table cloth over it. It's like um, Moroccan or something. I wasn't that comfortable kind of sitting down on my bum, and I had to kind of wiggle around quite a few times because uh, I'm not that used to sitting on the floor with my legs crossed. I'm not that bendy. I'm going to have to straddle, I'm afraid. I got quite excited when she uh, offered to show me her etchings, um, but she literally had artwork all around her that she had actually been doing over the last few years. There's a blonde in here quite a lot, so I'm guessing that's you. Very passively. OK. And I can see you in your bikini, which is, you know, that's a, that's a first for a first date, but, you know, looking good. <laughs> Overall, the date went really well. Uh, conversation was really flowing, there were no awkward moments, and it was really nice to have met her. Sonia gave Matthew two and a half stars, but will she be the one to find him on her doorstep tonight? Matthew's second dinner date was travel crazy maths teacher Louise, and it was a trip down memory lane down under. It was really funny with the kangaroo that uh, mine was obviously cooked a little bit better than hers. I think she was really worried. I can't even cut this. <laughs> Are you struggling? <laughs> it's 
at least it's entertaining. Yeah. How was dinner? Well, it was okay, but I got really good muscles in my right arm. <laughs> the meal was a really good icebreaker, uh, and it meant that we talked about Australia quite a lot. So you lived out there? Um, I lived there for a year. I loved it. It was like amazing. If I could go back tomorrow, I would, to be honest. Was definitely my type of girl in terms of looks and personality and her outlook on life and you know, the energy for travelling. Really Matthew fun. didn't quite get top marks. Louise gave him two stars. But will he be back for seconds of her? Matthew's final dinner date was with Executive Secretary Rebecca. It was a devilishly delightful Thank evening. Thank you very much. Rebecca and I got on really well. It was a lot more kind of chummy than date um, banter. Uh, we had loads to talk about and we definitely made each other laugh quite a lot. So have you, have you made the cheese then? Is this something that you've made? Yeah, yourself? there's a cow out back. Okay. I um, churned it earlier. And the bread I made by, yeah, I just... Have, have, you, not, have you not baked the bread? <laughs> it's heated, isn't it? <laughs> she was really entertaining. We, uh, we, we kind of we struggled to find time for food because we had a lot of banter going to and fro. I can't cook. And <laughs> if it can't microwave, it doesn't go in the basket. We well, see, I'm not entirely sure what's coming up for main course. <laughs> so I'm quite... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> It was great that she wore the horns through most of the meal um, and they definitely suited her because I can definitely see the, uh, the devilish side of her. Rebecca gave Matthew two stars, but will he be taking her out for a meal she hasn't had to cook? Matthew's three dinner dates are all getting glammed up and ready to go, but only one of them will have romance knock on their door. Um, I think we got on quite well, but I wouldn't say it's a love interest, maybe as a friend. It'd be nice. I don't want to get a takeaway, to be honest. I don't like takeaways. I hope Matthew picks me tonight, unfortunately. Personal reasons, I won't be able to make the date, so maybe we can reschedule for another date if he is to choose me. The date last night went a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It was a lot easier to get along. We had quite a good banter. Um, obviously, he was shorter than I was expecting, but it was still a lot of fun and an enjoyable evening. Matthew's on his way to take someone out for a meal they haven't had to cook. The other two will be eating in alone. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, shame. Never mind. Thank you. That leaves one woman who's cooked her way to a romantic meal for two. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to see you. You too. So I was wondering if you'd like to go out on a date. Um, I'd love to, but I can't go tonight. <laughs> OK, that's Sorry. all right. That's um, right. Something's come up. Um, so maybe we can get in contact and sort it out some other time if that's okay. If you'd still like to. No, 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 that's fine. That's okay. Sorry. No, that's absolutely fine. But at least you can get the flowers. Thank you, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> so a family emergency has come up. Romance might be on the menu for Matthew and Louise, but just not tonight. Remember those walls I built. Obviously, I'm really disappointed that Louise can't come out. Um, I was really looking forward to seeing her, uh, and she seemed quite keen to come out as well. But, uh, you know, these things happen, so it looks like I'm left without a date for the evening. And for Sonia and Rebecca, it's a night in and a ready meal for one. I don't think uh, I'm disappointed by Matthew's choice. Good for him. I hope he went for the right girl. But I'm just disappointed with the choice of the takeaway because I really don't like pasta. If it was anything else, it would be quite OK. But I'm disappointed with that. But good for him. I mean, I hope he finds the right girl. I thought we had fun, but obviously he was looking for something more than just someone he got on well with. and. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't know if there was an attraction there for my part, so maybe there wasn't one there for his part either. Definitely not. But little do Sonia and Rebecca know, they're not the only ones eating in alone. It's a bit of a disappointment. It's not really quite what I had in mind for tonight, but I have been left with my dinner date doggy bag. 
So have Matthew and Louise had that second date yet? So it's been a few weeks now since uh, I asked if Louise wanted to go out for dinner. Um, and obviously at the time she wasn't able to go, but she did say that we would make plans for another time. Sadly, since then, situations just haven't meant that we've been able to organise anything, so I've kind of missed out on having my, uh, my proper date. So the Corrie Years continues this evening and tonight it focuses on the first for the soap. We'll hear from Kevin Kennedy, William Roach and others at 7.30. And it's Robbie Coltrane who'll count down the 50 greatest Harry Potter moments as the curtain comes down on the magical saga. That's at 8.00. <laughs>